all right, she said and then added, I like this school a lot. Mother felt like telling her it wasn't a matter of whether she liked school, but of whether the headmaster liked her. But she just let go of Toto Chan's dress, took hold of her hand and started walking toward the headmaster's office. All the railroad cars were quiet, but for the first classes of the day had begun. Instead of a wall, the not very spacious school grounds were surrounded by trees and there were flowers, beds full of red and yellow flowers. The headmaster's office wasn't in a railroad car, but was on the right hand side of one story building that stood at the top of a semicircular flight of about seven stone steps opposite the gate. Toto Chan let go of mother's hand and raced up the steps, then turned around abruptly, almost causing mother to run into her. What's the matter? mother asked, fearing Toto Chan might have changed her mind about the school. Standing above her on the top step, Toto Chan whispered to mother in all seriousness. The man we're going to see must be a station master. Mother had plenty of patience as well as great sense of fun. She put her face close to Toto Chan's and whispered, Why? Toto Chan whispered back, You said he was the headmaster, but if he owns all these trains, he must be a station master. Mother had to admit it was unusual for a school to make use of old railroad cars, but there was no time to explain. She simply said, Why don't you ask him yourself? And anyway, what about Daddy? He plays the violin and owns several violins, but that doesn't make our house a violin shop, does it? No, it doesn't, Toto Chan 